Part 6. I attack things that are as dear to many as some holy image carried hither and thither by some broken clan, but can say that I have felt in my body the affections I disturb, and believe that if I could raise them into contemplation, I would make possible a literature that finding its subject matter already in men's minds would be, not as ours is, an interest for scholars, but the possession of a people. I have founded societies with this aim, and was indeed founding one in Paris when I first met with J. M. Singh, and I have known what it is to be changed by that I would have changed till I became argumentative and unmannerly, hating men even in daily life for their opinions. And though I was never convinced that the anatomies of last year's leaves are a living forest, or thought a continual apologetic could do other than make the soul a vapour and the body a stone, or believed that literature can be made by anything but by what is still blind and dumb within ourselves. I have had to learn how hard in one who lives where forms of expression and habits of thought have been born, not for the pleasure of begetting, but for the public good, is that purification from insincerity, vanity, malignity, arrogance, which is the discovery of style. But it became possible to live when I had learnt all I had not learnt in shaping words, in defending Singh against his enemies, and knew that rich energies, fine, turbulent or gracious thoughts, whether in life or letters, are but love children.